Good morning, friends. Welcome to the world of data mining. And welcome to the sixth semester also. So, what we are going to learn, that is our subject, data mining. The subject code for that is 3160714. And the first chapter which we want to learn is introduction to data mining. This subject is very interesting subject and the demand of this subject that is people who know this subject and programming related to that in Python are in demand. So take care of this subject and work with full of your heart. Okay. So what is there in the syllabus of this chapter? That is what is available here. Motivation, then definition, functionalities, classification, then task primitives, integration of data mining system with database or other things, issues and KDD process. Let us see that what all these things are. So, first of all, data mining should be there. Why am I showing you the title as data, information and knowledge? If we want to know data mining, we should know about data. Okay, but then why information and knowledge? Let us see the difference. See, many people who learn this subject, who know the subject, they also do not know the difference between these three terms. So let us see them. Information is useful, not the data. Data is raw data. And when it is meaningful, then it is information. So what is that? Data can be processed, it can be structured or unstructured. Information is processed data like a report. Knowledge is understanding of the information that is learned information. We can see the difference. First of all, say data is there. From that, that is the processing of the data that will give us the information. When we are having learned information, that will give us the knowledge. In our layman's terms, we are saying all three as almost same, but that is not the case, right? So layman also should be able to have the difference with all these three terms. And we computer engineers, must know the difference about these terms, right? A statistic translates data into information or knowledge as for example, the sample mean. Mean is known to us, that is sigma xi upon n, right? So motivation for data mining or you can be asked as why data mining. So let us see that the explosive growth of data. Where the data is growing? Yes, we can say we are every day using say Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, say Telegram and many other such applications. So, so what? where we are uploading our say photos, our status, our text, our videos and that is only me, only you, no, whole world. Many people are uploading too much data on the internet. Many data is coming from the scientific tools, scientific instruments and so what happens that 
the data is growing, 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 and growing. So we can say that from terabytes to petabytes, the data is growing. So, so, so what? So data collection and data availability. We are having too much data available. Too much data is being uploaded. That is being collected by, say, Facebook. We can say Twitter and many other things. They are there. But will we be able to mine it? If we as a programmer want to mine that data, we have to collect that. We should check it out whether it is available to us or not. Roles are there, right? So, or you can say we have to do some processing to get it available to us, isn't it? So, if we are having the data available and collected to us, what we will do? We will use the automated data collection tools. With that, what we can do is we can collect the data, we can download the data, which will be there with our systems. And after that, we can do particular processing. What sort of? That's what we will learn in this particular subject. So what we do is using the automated data collection tools, we'll be collecting the data from where? From database systems of whatever applications are available. We can say web computerized society that is you can say web web is you can say on the web say Flickr data is there you can say that Amazon data is there we can say that computer societies different types of computerized societies are there from that we can collect the data we may say suppose we engineers are talking of say CSI computer society of India right they are having their data which we can take Say ISDA data that we can take, say NPTEL, IIT data are there, we can collect them, right? So this data we are collecting and they are now available to our data mining systems, right? Till now we haven't yet seen the definition of data mining. We are first looking at the motivation for data mining, right? The word itself says data mining, go in the deep of data, right? That's what we can understand from the term. I haven't yet said you the definition, right? We will see that. Okay, so we are just looking at the motivation of it. Major sources of abundant data for business, web, e-commerce, transactions, stocks, Oof, too many. For science, we can say remote sensing, bioinformatics, scientific simulation, hmm. society and everyone, news, digital cameras, YouTube, all these things are giving us too much data, isn't it? And when we are having this much data, we should have the information and we should have the knowledge of it. Now, what we want to do with this data? Yes, we want to get the information, but, but, but that information must be meaningful to us. See, meaningful, that means which will support us in doing some decisions like it will help us in taking our organization's decisions if it is business then for business decisions it should be helpful to us for example see this example i will use throughout the semester let me tell you that when we are going to the market or let us say to a particular mall what happens there? We are purchasing few items. Let us only consider, say, food items. Okay. So, people will purchase a bread, butter, you can say vegetables, right? 
say wafers and biscuits, something like this people are purchasing. So only you will purchase from them all? No, many other people also will purchase. So what we can observe from that? The data is that, that is the transactions are being stored. That is a person one has purchased all these things. Person two has purchased all these things. So, so what? That is the data for us. What type of information we want to get from that? What type of data mining we want to get from that? And what sort of rules or how will it be helpful to us? It will give us the rules. What sort of rules? Let me say you. Say, I am having the transactions as a mall owner, wherein we can say that say 75 people out of 100, that is 75 percentage people, have purchased bread and all of them have purchased the butter also. Now what this gives me? This is the pattern which is available in the data. And that's what I could found from some algorithm. That's what we will learn in the subject. But from that, I could learn that people who are purchasing bread are purchasing butter also. So what I can do that if I give combo of that, and give few discount based on that, people will purchase bread butter together. You can say, ma'am, but 100% people are not purchasing. See, business is not working for 100% people, right? We always have to attract the people, right? So what we do is we have seen that 75 percentage people are purchasing bread and butter together. So we'll give the attraction to them. That is if we make the combo of it and give some discount, people will be more attracted towards it. And not only 75 percentage people, but more people will purchase it right they will be attracted when we see the discount we are always getting attracted isn't it so so such rule we can make that is when bread is purchased butter is also purchased so make the rule that is the combo will be having this discount right this is the simplest example and that's what we want to do with our subject and we want to support the business, the organizations in taking the particular decisions about the business. It is nothing like people just make the rules and apply it to the business, but through our data mining tools, we'll be having such rules derived that's what we want to learn in this subject and that is why this subject is a fantastic subject right we say that motivation for data mining that's what we are learning isn't it and we say that too much data is there so so what to do let's see we are drowning in the data but starving for knowledge do we have that? Do we have that? No, we do not have. The figures is very nicely that we are drowning in the data, but we are starving for knowledge. You can see the figure is very nice. The You can say people are there and around them too much data is there, but still they are hungry. They are starving for knowledge. Necessity is the mother of invention and that is what is the motivation for our data mining subject or we can say automated analysis of massive data sets.
right? So let us consider evolution of sciences. See, before 1600, empirical science was that. You can say, why are you teaching all those things? Because we want to know when data mining came to the existence. Before that, people were not knowing about it. So let us say that before 1600, empirical science was that. From 1600 to 1950, theoretical science was there. So what is that? Age discipline has grown a theoretical component. Theoretical models often motivate experiments and generalize our understanding. 1950 to 1990, computational science was there. So what was there? You can see that what it was having, that is, most disciplines have grown a third computational branch. That is, where we are having empirical, theoretical, computational, ecology, physics, or linguistics. Computational science traditionally meant simulation. It grew out of our inability to find Close form solutions for complex mathematical models. And from 1990 to now, we are having data science. You have already studied the subject that is Python for data science. So you do have the idea, right? The flood of data from new scientific instruments and simulations you can see these days many scientific instruments are there for measuring temperature, for measuring, say, other data, like you can say automatic data, automatic collection. Automatic, the data is being measured by the instruments and they are being uploaded on the internet. You can see that weather forecast is there how they are doing that they are getting the data of the temperature humidity of the environment and they are passing it to a particular system where it is being processed and we are able to have the idea whether rain will be there or not whether you can say uh, you can say hot environment will be there or not or you can say more cold will be there or not and many 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 more things right okay so the ability to economically store and manage petabytes of data online the internet and computing grid that makes all these archives universally accessible scientific info management acquisition organization, query, and visualization tasks scale almost linearly with data volumes. And data mining is a major new challenge. So what about evolution of database technology? As we have discussed that where was the empirical science, where was the theoretical science or computational science or the things are there. Let us discuss about the evolution of database technology. So what we say is in 1960s, we can say data collection, database creation, IMS and network DBMS were there. Then in 1970s, relational data model, relational database implementation was there. In 1980s, RDBMS, advanced data models, application-oriented DBMS that were there. In 1990s, data mining, data warehousing, multimedia databases and web databases. In 2000s, 
in that what can think of that is stream data management and mining streaming youtube streaming is there isn't it many other things are there i mean to say that continuously the data is being uploaded on the internet if we consider facebook there also the too much data is being uploaded say video is there you can say pictures are there you can say text are there many things are there that data can be structured or unstructured but the things we can say is data is getting uploaded and it is growing and growing and growing too much faster isn't it okay so data mining and its applications web technology xml data integration and global information systems were there in 2000s so now we want to know the next thing that is definition of data mining and functionalities data mining see the figure here is a person who can dig who can mine something isn't it see if only this this particular tool is there with person you can say person will dig only but here you can see in the cap hat of this person we are having the the light right who use that that is a mining people isn't it for call you can say people are mining it and there they need to have the light in their hat right so mining what we want to say is the figure explains us right what we do by mining till now what we know is when mining is done we are getting the diamonds isn't it diamonds we can see the diamonds here right okay so 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 we want to know from that what is data mining so people used to say it is knowledge discovery from from data and from this it is said as kdd also knowledge discovery from data or database it is said as kdd also so what is that extraction of interesting non trivial implicit previously unknown and potentially useful patterns or knowledge from huge amount of data that is what is data mining you can see let us how this is this way yeah so what is data mining data mining is extraction of interesting non trivial implicit previously unknown and potentially useful patterns or knowledge from huge amount of data that is what is data mining definition what do we say interesting it should be interesting yaar if it is not interesting what is the meaning of it right if it is useless if it is of no interest then why should we see that isn't it why should we do something for that we should do something only when it is interesting when it is non trivial which has some importance trivial means okay let it be right but non trivial it is important to us implicit which is already available in the data that was previously unknown it is nothing like it was already known and you are digging the same thing no 
it was previously a known and potentially useful patterns if it is not going to be useful why should we do that isn't it see we are engineers that is you will become engineer why are you doing such course because it is professional course with that you are learning which you will directly apply in the market isn't it and it is why these are the professional courses isn't it so what we do why should we do something we should do only when those things will be potentially useful isn't it so what we are doing is we are finding interesting non trivial implicit previously unknown and potentially useful patterns or knowledge from huge amount of data so what we see uh when we are having say gold mining are we saying it as are we saying it as rock mining sand mining what we are doing in that say when we are mining the gold we have talked of the diamonds let us now talk of the mining gold from rocks is called gold mining isn't it so what we are getting that's what we are saying say gold mining then here actually we are getting the information or knowledge so shouldn't we say it is the knowledge mining shouldn't we say it is the information mining why are we saying it is data mining because in case of gold mining we are not saying it is rock or sand mining so is it a misnomer is it a wrong name no it is not wrong name the way people are using it is data mining right and what we get is it depends on what we are working with what algorithm we apply yes of course we are going to get the knowledge so so but many other things that is not only the general name say it as in knowledge mining but people say it is data mining that is we are going in deep of data and getting information right people say it is knowledge discovery that is knowledge mining in databases people say that that is if we want to say that knowledge mining yes we can say but they are the alternative names fine so data mining is misnomer no it is not misnomer that is the general term we are giving right then what are the alternative names knowledge discovery or knowledge mining in databases knowledge extraction data or pattern analysis data archaeology data dredging information harvesting business intelligence because it provides intelligence to the business how we have taken simple example bread butter if it do not apply any particular rule then also people are going to purchase but 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 what is the idea of business that is we should get more profit and how to get more profit that is by attracting more people to purchase our products isn't it and that is what we are giving intelligence to the business and that is why these are the alternative names of data mining fine so is everything data mining we can say simple search and query processing no it does not have only this but more than that we can say it does have the export systems right so we'll use the particular algorithms to get the 
knowledge the patterns what type of patterns that is interesting non trivial implicit which is already available in the data but that was previously unknown and which is potentially useful that's what we want to find from huge amount of data and that is what is data mining see i am explaining you the way you can remember the definition and understand also right so take care of it now data mining algorithms characterized how they are getting characterized let us see that data mining algorithms what will be there in we do not know that we want to learn right but they are characterized as consisting of three parts what are they first is model that is the purpose of the algorithms to fit a model to the data particular model what that we will see no need to worry but 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 let me explain you this in the way that you can say how will you work for a particular subject what you believe in that you should have some role model isn't it mujhe kaisa banna hai like vivekanand hmm, who was reading a page only once in his life and he remembers everything i want to be like him i want to be like say bill gates who is the millionaire i want to be like amarnis whatever you want to be right what you have in your mind that is the model isn't it and what you do is all of you are having some definition in your mind you consider if i get the job or if i am able to have the startup whatever things are there in your mind you do have some model i want to be like this isn't it that's what we are talking of here model the purpose of the algorithms to fit the model to the data i want to be like sardar vallabh bhai patel who is having the energy to to combine all the states right so so combine all states is it required now in india no but he has the ability he was having the ability to unite the people and take work from them right so the strongest person isn't it we used to say him iron man so we want to follow such things right the model for us that's what we are talking of here second one is preference some criteria must be used to fit one model over the other i believe if i have say 10 lakhs per month salary then i can say i am okay fine i consider if i am having say one bmw then okay i can say fine i am successful right your model is successful or not for that you can say that you do have some criterias see nobody is having 100% in their life but they have some criterias which they want to achieve and they can ignore other things right so that's what we are considering as the preference of that model search all the algorithms require some techniques to search the data so for data mining algorithms we consider that these are the three characteristics for characterizing the algorithms right they are the model preference and search fine so let us now talk of the data mining functionalities the said functionalities are measured to perceive the types of pattern to be found in the data mining task what type of pattern we want to get from the data mining task and 
based on that we can say we can talk of the tasks as well as we can talk of the functionalities right okay so the data mining task and models can be either predictive or descriptive so so they can be categorized into two categories and they are one is descriptive task or model and the second one is predictive task or model so let us see what is descriptive task or model and what is what is you can say predictive task or model fine let us see that descriptive task okay let us see that this task present the general properties of data stored in database general properties okay let's see that unlike predictive model a descriptive model serves as a way to explore the properties of the data examined not to predict new properties right what it says predictive model does what that it it does predict the new properties but descriptive task or descriptive model will it do that no it will not do that a descriptive model serves as a way to explore the properties fine okay the descriptive tasks are used to find out patterns in the data that is clustering summarization association rules correlation trends and anomalies sequence discovery etc you can say ma'am what are all these things no need to worry how the terms in your mind we'll see them in the detail fine so second one is predictive task what about that it makes a prediction about values of data using known results found from different data uh we can say we know that that uh, people are using bread and butter hmm people are using bread and butter so what i see is my prediction about that data is if people purchase bread they will purchase butter also so predictive doesn't mean we are going to consider the astrology right astrology if you want to consider in the form of our business yes we can say no issue for that but 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 here the predictions are based on the known results found from the data you can say that we have seen that people are purchasing bread they are purchasing butter so 75% people are doing that so from that we say that we predict that people who purchase bread will purchase butter also it is not for 100% people right there we say that 75% people are following that so we can say if we are giving this prediction and based on that if we are supporting business rules we will be able to attract more people for that right so take care of that predictive data mining tasks predict the value of one attribute on the basis of values of other attributes which is known as target or dependent variable and the attributes used for making the prediction are known as independent variables as for example credit card use might be refused not because of the user's own credit card history but because of the current purchase is similar to earlier purchases 
that were subsequently found to be made with stolen cards. You can say, ma'am, what is this? Let me explain you this. What we want to say is, say, we are having the data wherein we can say that the data of stolen cards are there. Whatever things the thieves purchase after stealing the cards, they are, for example, say gold jewelry, diamond jewelry. You can say it can be the branded clothes. So this is the pattern you can say, diamond jewelry, gold jewelry, or you can say diamond jewelry or gold jewelry. Second one is, say branded clothes. Then the third one can be, you can say the bike, right? So this is the pattern which is being followed by the thieves who steal the cards. If this is the pattern, then what happens? This pattern is being stored in the databases as the, the purchase history for the stolen cards. Now what happens? You are the normal user, but you use your credit card for purchasing the same pattern. Then what will happen? The bank will stop you. Will they stop you? No. They will give the they will give the notification to you that this is the similar history to that of the thieves. So are you the same person? who owns the credit card and they give you some security questions or you can say they are trying to authenticate the card. That is whatever purchase you are going to do is by the proper owner of the credit card or not. You can say that is irritating to the normal user. It is my card. I can purchase whatever I want. But the thing is, see the other view. That is, you are being secured from the thieves. Isn't it? If bank doesn't stop you, or you can say they do not ask you more questions, or they are not trying to authenticate you in such similar transactions, which are which are matching with the patterns of the stealing cards, then you can say that you can have the fraud. That is, your own card could be stolen and people are purchasing from your own card. So do you want to have such thing with your card? Obviously not, isn't it? And it is why banks will provide you the notification. They will try to have the authentication. Try to give more data that are you the same person who owns the credit card, right? So for such task, data mining is useful and that is called the fraud detection, right? Okay, so in such things, you can say more security questions or you can say, more procedure to authenticate that a person is the same who is the owner of the credit card, right? So the example makes you clear about the prediction. That is the same pattern of the stolen cards is being followed by you, right? See, there is nothing wrong in purchasing the same things, but it will be verified that are you the same owner and if so bank will not stop you but some more authentication procedure you will have to do and that is for your own security right so when we are getting 
secured, we always follow the things, isn't it? So predictive model determining tasks include classification, regression, time series analysis, and prediction. Prediction may also be used to indicate a specific type of data mining function, right? That is what we have talked of, that is a credit card use might be refused not because of the user's own credit card history, but because of the current purchase is similar to earlier purchases that were subsequently found to be made with stolen cards, right? So that is understood to you very nicely, isn't it? So next, we would learn the data mining functionalities. First of all, let us know about the prediction. What is that? Predictive model determined the future outcome rather than present behavior. But, but, but that is being predicted from the present behavior only. The predictive attribute of a predictive model can be geometric or categorical. It engrows the ruling of set of characteristics relevant to the attribute of interesting and predicting the value distribution based on the set of data similar to the selected object. For example, one may predict the kind of disease based on the symptoms of a patient. Let's say that if a person is having, say, breathing problem, his temperature is more, or you can say his oxygen level is reduced. What we say that? We predict that person can be having the corona, right? In this particular days, we can say this. So what it says, the example says that from the selected object, this what person, whatever characteristics we have considered, from the symptoms of that patient, we can say that person can be suffering from a particular, particular disease, right? Okay. So that's all for today.